it started with a flag. The Salt River Indian community had a desire to have a flag from the USS Arizona. And it took many conversations and many years. Um, and finally, they were invited to Pearl Harbor to receive a flag um, back in 2007. And it was during that visit, I think, that conversations were had and relationships were made and the opportunity and the glimmer of that opportunity to have a piece of the Arizona back here in Salt River, I, it began the, that day. Um, and once again, years and years and years of conversation later, there was an opportunity for the uh, American Legion post, the Bushmasters post 1114 from here from Salt River, to go back to Pearl Harbor, have those discussions again, and then, then finally this became available and they asked the community if they would like it and they said absolutely. So that's the story of the actual relic getting here. You're sitting on a five acre footprint here and it's actually the same length and width of the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor. There's 1,512 columns here that make the silhouette of the ship. Um, and 1,171 of those columns are lit and those represent the people that passed that day. The 1,512 represents a column for every single person that was on board the ship December 7th. Um, their survivors were indicated by the posts that don't have any lights and you'll see there's few and far between. Um, so that's basically the footprint here and that doesn't even talk about the relic which is behind me in that building um, and that is a piece of the boathouse and the boathouse was actually the makeshift memorial after the attacks on December 7th. Um, it's what, where everybody went. It was the standing piece um, until the time where they were able to raise enough funds to build the memorial that we know of today. So this boathouse ended up in a shipyard for years after that. Um, and now it is commemorated here in the building behind us. Um, in addition, you'll find there's interpretive panels on both sides of the relic building that talk about you know, what led up to the attack, the attack itself, and um, the journey of the piece getting here. Additionally, there are name blocks for every single person that was on board the ship that day with their rank. Um, so that's a beautiful thing to see here in the gardens as well. Rather than having to create a space that had water, we were able to utilize the space where the water was already here. It was just reclaimed water from Salt River Fields. They extended the lake. And the intent, of course, was they wanted to show the bow of the ship in the water as if it is in Pearl Harbor now. So it really has been an unbelievable location for it. As you, when you are near the bow of this landscape over here and you're over the water, it's just, it's mesmerizing. Out in the water, you'll see two turrets, actually which represent the turrets and the one closest to the deck is the turret number two which is where the big bomb dropped and um, blew up the Arizona sadly but you'll see that that it, it's actually irrigation for the water right but it's an attention to look like the oil that is still bubbling as you'll see in Pearl Harbor so lots of little details that really tell the story you know the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community has has believes that we should be indebted to all people that lost their lives in serving the country. And, you know, both the Pima and the Maricopa have always been very engaged in the military for, for years, actually dating back in Arizona to um, helping the U.S. government with civil war battles. So there's always been that those huge ties. And like I say, I think conversations were had and they just decided at that point they really wanted to have the flag. Um, once they received the flag, every single year on December 7th, they promised the Navy and everyone at Pearl Harbor that they would have a waving of the flag ceremony every December 7th. And now that is actually done here. Um, so it's just, it's just an indebted feeling in so many people's hearts here within the community. At night, it's, uh, the lights are LED lights and they're staged to go on at sunset. Actually, military twilight, I believe it's called, a few minutes after sunset. And when you're here during that time, the gardens do completely transform. I think it's a place where we can share those stories with our family, with our children, and, and make those stories live on. And whether it be for, like I say, you know, the USS Arizona, World War II, or any of the other conflicts, it's important for us, um, and I hope that people recognize the importance and the sacrifice that all of our veterans make every single day of their lives and the things that they miss with their families and those that never come back. So 
I hope that gives them a moment to think about those things. The gardens, Memorial Gardens are open every single day. Um, people are welcome to come from you know dawn till dusk. We actually encourage people to come even after sunset a little bit so you can enjoy the, um, the lights when they turn on and, and feel that transformation. The Relic Room itself is open during major military holidays. Um, and if you are interested in having a tour, if there's 10 or more folks, we can arrange that too. Um, so we have a visitor center, you can outreach to us there. Um, but yes, anybody is welcome any, any day uh, of the year to come and visit and enjoy.